Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the VFly Beacon wireless self-powered drone buzzer. This is a small device that might help you to recover your lost drone or actually any remote control vehicle. Inside its box you can find the VFly Beacon buzzer unit, a small double-sided tape and also the short and simple instructions manual that tells you how to operate it. As you can see, the VFly Beacon is very similar to the VFly Finder 2, which I've previously reviewed. They both feature a pretty big onboard buzzer, an LED unit, and also a built-in battery. However, the biggest difference between the units is that instead of using a JST connector for connecting the buzzer to your flight controller, the VFly Beacon is using a micro USB port that is used only for charging it, and it features an integrated motion detector that determines whether to activate the buzzer. Using this motion detector, the buzzer is going to be activated in these three cases, whether you crash the quadcopter, if it's static for more than five minutes, and if the flight time is over 40 minutes. In addition, just like the VFly Finder 2, the Beacon features a light detector, and in order to extend the operation time, the LED unit is only going to turn on at night. In terms of dimensions, the outer dimensions of the Beacon are identical to the VFly Finder 2 and they are 13.5 by 25 by 15.5 millimeters. The weight of the Beacon is about 5.1 grams, so it's a little bit heavier than the Finder 2. According to the buzzer specifications, its maximum volume is up to 105 decibels and I'm going to measure it shortly. Its walking time is up to 30 hours and the charge time of its built-in 80 mAh LiPo battery is about 1.5 hours. Here you can see the alarm pattern of the buzzer. After the buzzer is going to be activated, for the first 30 seconds, it's going to beep at low volume. Then between 30 seconds to 2 hours, it's going to beep at maximum volume every 6 seconds, and after 2 hours, it's going to either beep every 12 seconds at its maximum volume, or be idle until dawn. So for example, if you crashed your drone during the day and night will arrive, the buzzer is going to be idle. However, if you're going to crash it during the night, this setting is not going to be applicable and it's just going to beep every 12 seconds after two hours. This is a pretty smart configuration, which is going to extend the walking time of the buzzer and hopefully help you find your lost drone. Operating the beacon is solely done using this button over here. Now it's turned off, and if you wish to turn it on, you'll need to press this button for about 2 seconds. Once it's going to be on, it's going to be indicated by two continuous beeps and a single flash of the LED. If you wish to turn it off, you'll need to long press this button again for 3 seconds, and once it's off, it's going to be indicated by three continuous beeps. Now the beacon is turned on. I'm going to simulate a flight by just shaking the buzzer, and now let's simulate a crash. Now the buzzer is going to enter pre-alarm status, so it's going to beep every three seconds. After 30 seconds are going to pass, the buzzer is going to be activated. So now I'm going to wait for 30 seconds. And as you can hear, now the buzzer has been activated. In case you're going to move the buzzer again, it's going to enter stealing alarm, so it's going to continue beeping in order to alert the thief that somebody is watching him and hopefully is just going to let go of your drone. And if you wish to deactivate the buzzer, you will need to press this button for about four seconds and then it's going to be deactivated. In case you're going to move the buzzer when it's in pre-alarm status, the buzzer is going to stop beeping and then only if you're going to crash or land your quadcopter, it's going to enter pre-alarm status again. After testing it with my sound meter, I can confirm that the buzzer is identical to the VFly Finder 2, and the maximum measured decibel value at around 15 centimeters distance is close to 100 decibels. Since the volume of both VFly Finder 2 and Beacon buzzers is identical, you can check out my field test of the VFly Finder 2 as it's applicable also for the VFly Beacon, and the full test can be found over here. Charging the VFly Beacon is done through the micro USB port, so you just have to connect it to a power source, then the red LED over here is going to be turned on, which means that the battery is being charged, and once the battery is going to be full, this LED is going to be turned off. 
If you wish, you can still operate the buzzer while it's being charged. Uh, this is going to be useful if you're going to use this type of connector and just solder it to your flight controller and then charge the VFLY beacon on the go. However, you should note that after you're going to turn on the buzzer, when the micro USB port is going to be connected, you're going to be able to set the sensitivity of the motion detector. So now after turning on the buzzer, you can see that the LED is going to flash continuously and it's going to do that for the next 10 seconds. If you're going to short press the configuration button, now you're going to enter the motion sensitivity settings. Now the LED flashes twice, which indicates that it's set to medium. If you're going to press it again, it's going to flash three times, which is going to indicate that it's going to be set to low. And if it's only going to flash once, the motion sensitivity is going to be set to high. By default, the sensitivity setting is set to medium. Overall, I can tell you that the v -Flight Beacon is a great solution for protecting your drones or any other type of RC vehicles, since it's very easy to use it, it's portable and you can simply move it around different drones that you own, and its highest advantage is that it's not dependent on any other type of equipment, so you can simply place it, for example, on your DJI quadcopter, and then hopefully if you crash it, it's going to help you to find it. You should note, however, that unlike the VFLY Finder 2, which also double acts as a normal buzzer, which you can activate manually by flipping a switch, for example, operating the VFLY beacon manually is not possible. So if you have a racing drone and you still need to have the capability of activating the buzzer yourself, you should go with the VFLY Finder 2. And I hope that on the next version of the VFLY beacon, they are going to add an extra port that will enable you to connect it to B-Flight and then activate the buzzer by yourself. And of course, I should also note that you have to remember to charge the VFLY beacon because unlike the VFLY Finder 2, it's not going to be charged while you fly in the quadcopter. In terms of pricing, the VFLY beacon costs $18, which is $3 more than the VFLY Finder 2, so the price difference is not that big. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about the VFLY Beacon, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.